Hey traders, it's Red Ben again. Wanted to give you a peek into how I analyze the trading session and plan for the next trading session. So this is basically my overnight homework where I take a look at what's going on in the markets, try to find some important levels and see if I can uh, get a feel for which side of the market is in control of movement. So what I start with is this view here, which is the 24 hour volume profile without price. Many traders will uh, recommend using only the regular trading hours volume profile. And there is legitimate reason to look at that. I've found the, uh, especially the London session is useful. So rather than split them all up, I still do use the 24 hour at least to begin with. If I've got some areas that I'm really unsure of, one way to zoom in a little bit is to look at where the regular trading hour uh, volume profile uh, might, the edges are in the, in, the, in the volume areas, volume area high, volume area low, the VPOC, where all the volume was during the trading, the regular trading hours and see if that's significantly different than the overnight. But to start with, we take a look at this 24 hour view. What the first thing you want to take, want to see is, uh, first of all, is there a trend and it has volume been developing higher or lower over time? So you can see from here, this is the end of June and this is uh, today, Tuesday the 12th, um, or sorry, yeah, the 13th, let's see, Tuesday the 13th is here. So again, 24 hours. So the 13th begins um, here. So since the end of June, we have developed volume higher and the market has accepted price uh, rising with really only one exception on uh, July 8th. This was the dip that was immediately bought overnight, um, gapped up and uh, squeezed with a couple P profiles. So. The important thing to remember is that with the exception of this one day, we've generally been going higher. And even today, uh, you know, we traded within the range of yesterday. So here is the 24 hour Monday range with the volume area. If I zoom in here a little bit, it's the highlighted area here. So we did push down below the low volume area, the, uh, but we stayed inside of the range of yesterday. This is on ES, uh, NQ is obviously different, but here, the other important point is that we did make a new all time high and we did find sellers there during the regular trading hours. And we'll, we'll see this more clearly when we bring up the candles, but Sometimes taking a look at the candles, see, for me anyway, seeing the red and the green, it gives me a bias that is not always accurate. And volume is very clear cut. Uh, so if you can see, for instance, here, you know, the, the, the difference from, uh, from, from one day to, to the next, it's just been, you know, nonstop buying. Um, looking at where the volume is within the range is also really important. So for instance, Monday, most of the volume was way up here on top of the range, or at least in the middle of the range, um, compared to, as you see here, uh, barely any volume when we did try to test back into the previous day's range. So what that suggests is that uh, everyone, both sides agree that there's no interest in re-auctioning that area. And we should ex or should have expected that any attempt to push down, at least the first time, is going to find responsive buying. If there were buyers there last time, there unless there's been something fundamentally changed, there should be expected be, to be found buyers this time. You can also look for tails. So uh, tails are examples of low volume um, at the edges. So also known as a taper. So this is a really good example of what we saw here. And you know, the low at 43, let's call it 56.50, all the way up to 58.50. 50. 
there was very there were very few contracts uh, traded relative to some of the more uh, heavily traded areas. So what that tells us again is that if we press into there overnight on the the first push, we should expect some buyers. But the interesting thing is is if we can get under it and then come back up and find sellers there in the future, such as tomorrow, it, it is very possible that these uh, these tapers actually reverse, but you have to get, you have to push under it first. Um, and the idea there is that you're basically trapping the buyers who bought way too high when if they're not trading futures where they can trade any time, but instead they're trading options or shares, and they wake up to price being down maybe uh, 43.50, for instance. Um, that's a, you know, if they bought today at 43.80 and they wake up to 43.50, they, they may try to defend it by buying, but if they see this taper and they know what they're doing, they, they, can, they can see that the chances that uh, price is gonna come all the way back up to 43.80 in a short amount of time is pretty low. So if they're heavily leveraged, they're probably going to become sellers, which then presses price lower. But that doesn't happen until we get under it. So it's important not to get too far ahead of ourselves. The next thing we look at is the uh, the VPOC, the, uh, the point of control. So this is where most of the trading was done throughout the last 24 hours. It did move down since Mondays, but only slightly. It did not move down uh, too far. So if it would get under... 4360 or certainly underneath yesterday's volume area. So 4363 or so underneath maybe this taper or tail. Uh, if we put in a day where the volume, the point of control is certainly lower than today's range, that's a lot more bearish than simply a, a slight move down. The other important thing to look at is range. Uh, volume and range are what give you the first hints to a change in direction. So increase in volume, which you can see down here, um, as well as how thick the profile is, and then range, so how, how tall it is. Um, if, if you're going to get a sudden shift uh, in a trend, you should expect that the, both of those things increase. Sometimes you'll get a contraction first of range uh, and volume, and then followed by a uh, expansion. But here what we had is an, an expansion upwards, but technically a contraction on the bottom. So it's it may have felt bearish today, but it's technically not bearish yet. We did have some selling and that was a change in character, but just looking at the volume, we're accepting price higher prices uh, and, and, and that just hasn't changed. We can keep an eye uh, down here on the uh, volume by time, as these you know these bars show that during the regular trading session, the afternoon was much more heavy uh, on the sell side than on the buy side. They were able to. This is the 30-minute chart uh, without the candles, and so in the beginning of the day and pre-market, most of the periods ended green, with few exceptions. Uh, whereas in the afternoon, almost every single one closed lower than it opened. We haven't seen that for quite some time. If you look back quite a bit. It's been a long time since we've seen the end of the day, beginning with the after the 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 flip in the afternoon, be all bearish. So it'll be very interesting to see what this overnight session brings us. So let's bring up the candles. That's the next step. Uh, and then what I like to do once the candles are there is I do a fib draw. Now since it's still the beginning of the month, the the most obvious place to draw a fib is the first range of the first trading day. This is just my own personal preference. There's not really a right or wrong way to do a FIB. Um, I like to look at FIB extensions both in positive and negative direction. Uh, so for instance, here on July 1st, the high was here um, at uh, 43.05.75 and the low was 42.86. So I'll draw this and then take a look at the extensions so here's the second extension, the third extension, the fourth extension, and then some Fibonacci numbers in between. 
Now, those aren't going to you know, be respected every single time they get hit, but the first time they're tested, you often will get a response. So for instance, here on the second extension, 43.25.50, we came up it during uh, regular trading hours on the second, the very next day, and did find some responsive sellers. Now, because of the move here and the, the, the trend day, that developed, it, it, they didn't hold. The buyers were much too strong. So you wouldn't want to, you, you don't want to just sell relentlessly here. But once you've gotten over it and closed over it, it tells you a lot. And you would certainly not want to be an active seller at this point, uh, because you know that at least from the Fibonacci standpoint, there's not a good reason to expect. There's there, First of all, it was at all time highs. So there's no reason to expect any uh, uh, real resistance. And the only other thing you have to measure is with fibs extensions so this is the primary reason i'm using fibs right now is because we don't have a uh you know a uh, price chart that looks like this so if we were back in, in this kind of action where we're no longer at all-time highs you can use previous highs previous lows previous volume points of control all of those things to decide where resistance and support is but way up top that there's not a whole lot to work with so the result is you rely on whatever tools you have, which in this case is the FIB extensions. But if you take a look here, so we were looking at the two. Uh, yeah, so we moved up here and hit the three. And again, you can see how we found some responsive sellers there. We got over it. We then tested below it, tested from below again, and found sellers and immediately sold off. So again, you know, it's it, there is a chicken or an egg uh, argument here. Are we selling off because it's a FIB extension or is it more that there's something else causing this selling in this general zone and it, it's it's just it's bound to happen around the third extension? Uh, it, it doesn't really matter from a trader's point of view. What matters is if, if you know that this was the range that we started with and you're testing three times as high as it, you you can't just blindly buy there. You you have to get a rotation above it. At least find something like a trend day that's pushing above it or a very healthy rotation. Um, so again, we've been doing this big range, these big rotational ranges. Uh, and really, the, the, it's been very difficult to trade because the actual micro rotations within the day are, are few and far between. You can see you just go unidirectional with maybe one opportunity to jump on. Here's another example here. Um, and this is happening overnight as well. So most of the time you're getting all the way up, a slight pullback. Maybe if you were lucky and you were watching very closely, you get in here. But you know you have resistance there. There's It's not real clear whether or not you're going to get another opportunity to get in. It's very difficult trading at all time highs, especially in the summer. So uh, again, we go back, we get to the fourth extension. That's 43.69.75. Uh, that lined up rather nicely with this volume point of control. Again, I don't really uh, care if that's just um, coincidence or not. The point is, is that it's a it's an interesting level to watch for. And the fact that we don't have a whole lot else to work with, it, 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 it's something to keep an eye on. Uh, we based off of it, moved higher, came back and tested this area again and bounced. Um, you know, I could go in there and probably add a fifth one, and I wouldn't be surprised if uh, it's also relatively close. Let's just see. So there's one here. Let's put, let's see, I don't usually use this one. So let's see what the, what the five is. Okay, so we haven't quite hit the five. Uh, which would be 43.84.75. So interesting if we get up there, whether or not we find sellers. So let's zoom into today. Today's 20, again, this 24 hour action. We had the CPI come in very hot, uh, had a shave top candle here on the 30 minute that just sold off really quick. Um, some in the room, in the trade and perform room where I'm trading, uh, did catch that short. I wasn't willing to take it. Um, more caught the long. Uh, but there was really no rotation. Maybe maybe one quick one here if you were watching. But you know, buying in this area is 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 pretty difficult after that kind of a move. You it's hard to decide where to put your risk. So I didn't trade that personally. But just take a look at these huge ranges that are be put, being put in. It's it, it's uh, it looks exciting, but it's actually pretty boring trading unless you you're willing to take 
a, a very large risk by sizing down. Um, but then we came up here and we put in an all-time high during regular trading hours. Take a look at the volume here. I thought this was really interesting. We have a volume taper into the high uh, and then got some excess buying up above and closed below the previous candle's low. So this uh, this little reversal whoops, pattern here is pretty, pretty classic um, where you got a hammer, excess buying, and then a close below it. Uh, it happened to also base right on the 4.764 extension at 4380. So in the future, we want to take a look at 4380. Consider that might be a uh, order flow level that we may find sellers in the future. And if we can get above 4380, back test it with a nice wick kind of like this. Again, it doesn't have to hit it on the spot. It just has to, we have to find interested buyers near that area. Uh, then that, that'll clear the way to go higher. But what ended up happening in the afternoon is we got a nice uh, rolling sell. This was much easier to catch. Uh, we got a couple nice shorts and then uh, some in the room caught the long at the end of the day too. Um, take a look at where we closed uh, before the end of the day. It was you know, near the lows. Uh, if you remember, this is all pre-market. So market opens here at 9.30 Eastern and we are, we are, we traded lower, we closed red on the day and closed near the lows. But those lows were, uh, correspond to this area here. So, and that's just, that's just the day before. Um, sorry, this is the day before. So it's two days before. Still, the point is, is we're not, we're not pushing range as we looked at in the volume, when we were looking at volume profile, we're not, we're not pushing the range lower quite yet. So what should we expect going forward? Well, we take a look at the volume profile again, and we can determine what type of profile we have, what shape. Um, it's a pretty normal day, but there's definitely some anomalies up here. It's, it's not completely a, a, a normal distribution. So we would expect any press into this area, again, 4380 being the, the primary important point. It should, we should find responsive selling the first time we get into that. Uh, there's also an interesting anomaly, but it's inside of the previous day's volume area and right near the VPOC. So I'm not going to be looking to trade off of this one, but it, we might get some rotations there. I drew this channel here, uh, expecting value below it and premiums above it. And we did get that. Note here, we did get one sell below it. This, again, trend lines are not my preferred way to trade, but it's sometimes important to get a general sense of how the market is behaving. Uh, one, tr one close below a trend line is not enough for me to decide that uh, the direction has changed. This is a really good example of that. We closed below it on one 30 minute profile, ran right back up and got to a new high. So this isn't enough for me, but if we would get below this trend line, then test it, backside test it from below and continue lower looking for responsive buyers, which would probably be found around the 4350 point uh, into this little double bottom, maybe the neckline here I would be looking. Again, 4350 is, is my primary target. Uh, that's that's what I would expect, where I would expect buyers to be waiting for the first time. It doesn't necessarily stop there. Take a look at all these single prints. So we can mark these off. This is an important zone here. We The market moved through it on the 9th very quickly without any real significant rotations. So it's a, an emotional move. And when we came back to test it overnight, again, this is the this is the London session. So New York regular trading session has not had an opportunity to establish that buyers are in control here. It's quite possible that we actually run right through it, but usually you get one test and bounce first. So we can just extend this area out. And uh, if 50, if 4350 doesn't hold, it would surprise me if this got traded through on the very first try. But what I might expect if we get lower overnight would be a test into 4350, a back test of maybe some somewhere in this trend line near the pre-market low, then a test uh, of these single prints 
another bounce, which then could continue higher. That's probably that should that should be our our assumption, just because that's what it's done every other time for the entire month, if not the entire year. Uh, but if it happens to roll over and trade through here, that change in behavior uh, will start to make traders uh, target these these areas much lower. So we have to be prepared for that. Um, now the other the other possibility is that we just chop in this area, which is why I put a um, rectangle here. So if we can't get under the pre-market lows, there's no reason to be bearish. And it would make a lot of sense to re-auction this rain, this uh, high range area. If you look to the left, there hasn't been a whole lot of agreement, um, especially underneath the VPOC here, uh, 4370 or so. So from 4363 to 4370, that whole area. So here, let me just mark this off uh, here. So this entire area, here is really un, 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 unsecure, let's say. Um, and if we if we find responsive sellers here, it can push us down. If we find responsive buyers from above, it can push us up. But what usually happens is it just creates rotations inside. The big question is, is what will happen overnight and where we open? So we've got three possible scenarios. Either we trade through this, get above 4370, and then you'd expect 4380 to be tested. Um, probably then a back test of 4370 and higher. Um, the alternative possibility is we stay under it or test into it and break down. So then I'm looking at probably somewhere between 4338, let's say like the center of this to 4350 to, to find some responsive buyers on the first try. Um, alternatively, just a really flat overnight, in which case I'd be very, very cautious of making any trades in the early morning tomorrow because when we open inside of yesterday's volume area, uh, trading is not very clean. So that's the plan, and I hope that's helpful for everybody. Uh, trade safe and have a plan. Talk to you guys next time.